Canadian National Exhibition is going on outside, but the best show on earth is still right here at BMO Field. I'm Mike Dubrick, and I'm here with Paul Byrne, Director of Business Operations for Toronto FC. Paul, thanks for coming on Red Patch Live. No problem, actually, you came to us. That's true, we did. Uh, and the reason we came here today is because Paul is going to give us a quick tour of uh, the ins and outs of BMO Field, an exclusive show for you viewers on Red Patch Live. Yeah, well, let's start here. Okay, sure. Let's start with this room. This, is, right uh, this, this room is the turf room. As you can see, it's a lovely room outfitted with green carpet. This is the same turf that we have outside. The intention behind this room, it was a, uh, a requirement for FIFA for the Under-20 World Cup. And uh, as I was just telling Mike, that during the uh, Under-20 World Cup, we had these double headers. And it, when you have a double header, you know, the, the teams that are on next can come in here and, uh, and, and get warmed up and ready for the, for the game. Unfortunately, during the Under-20 World Cup, they forgot about that. And uh, the, uh, the FIFA people filled this room with desks and they had their administrative people in here. So I'm not really sure what the intention was. But now we are stuck with a lovely green carpet in a, in a useless room that we will probably never use again. This is sitting on top of a concrete slab. Outside, it's sitting on a, a, a variety of different levels. I think Parkdale could probably uh, fill you in on exactly what's there because he was here during Maybe construction. Maybe once or twice. Uh, so it's a lot softer out there, even though it's the same surface, and that's because of what's underneath. Okay, the grand entrance. Oh, uh, Danny, if you want to put some pants on. <laughs> All right, this is, uh, this is the, the team dressing room. Um, we've got, uh, again, more sound system, more fun stuff for our players. Um, there's Sean. Sean, say hi to the Red Patch boys. Hey, how you doing? How you doing, Red Patch boys? <laughs> now, how does this room compare to other MLS grounds, specifically the ones that have soccer-specific stadiums, like Toyota Park um, or in, uh, in Colorado? It's about the same. Uh, Colorado had a lot more metal. You know, the, the, the actual lockers were made of metal, and that sort of changes the vibe of the room a little bit. It, it was just as well outfitted as this, but to me it, it sort of had a high school feel to it. Whereas we went to um, Colorado and we saw their dressing room um, and it wasn't laminate, it was nice pine or something. Oh, okay. So it was wood grain everywhere and that, that brought theirs up a notch. But I mean, at the end of the day, all, the f all three rooms were exactly the same. They're just made with different materials, so. Hmm. Excellent. Come on in, Gobi. All right, so this is our uh, workout facility. We've got, uh, we've got all manner of, of bikes, we've got balls, we've got a sound system over there, so a couple of TVs, and a nice, nice high ceilings, nice natural light. This is probably one of the nicest rooms in the building. Very cool. Now what's the team's regime for training? Obviously they do training out on the park every day. Uh, now what, what goes on in here? Is there specific times that the coach that Mo is going to have them in here? Do they come in at their leisure? Uh, both. Both? Yeah, in fact, you know, if, if we were going to run into somebody, as I mentioned to you before, it's. Uh, it's after two o'clock, and uh, soccer players go home and have a little nap. They're all so, gone home. You know, they don't. They don't. They don't have to work as hard as we do. Don't tell them I said that. Well, where are we off to next? This is the room that Argentina trashed after the World Cup. Uh, we yeah we weren't able to use this room. So when the who came Aston Villa yep. and uh, and LA Galaxy both used the Team Canada locker room because this room wasn't usable uh, due to some repairs. Um, so traditionally, this is the away locker room. Yes, this is the MLS away away, MLS away locker room. Yeah. So this is the locker room uh, back there. There's no lights on, but back there we've got um, showers and grooming facilities. We've got um, a, a trainer's area with with uh, massage beds and that kind of thing. Um, we give them the bare minimum, of course, and we try and crank up the heat whenever they come. So that was the locker room. What you're looking at now is the uh, is just a place where everybody can hang out. Um, now, how much time do the guys yeah. usually spend around here during the day? Obviously, there's a couple of hours of practice every morning, and then Coaches they come in. Coaches are in very early, usually around seven. Okay. Um, they, uh, you know, they're just getting ready for the day and getting caught up on things. Uh, players, or sorry, the training staff like Carmelo and uh, Sean would would show up around eight thirty. Kitman's here first thing in the morning, making sure that this place is all neat and tidy and, and everybody's got what they need for the day ahead. Um, and then uh, players come in around 8.30, 9 o'clock. Um, during the morning, you see you know six or seven bikes out here because a lot of our guys ride their bikes to work, and they, that's the beauty of having a nice urban um, training facility that is also our home because they, you know, they... They really feel comfortable coming and going here. Yeah, that's fantastic because, you know, look at grounds like Chicago and, and other places, even the potential new one in D.C., you're looking at places that are way out in the suburbs, yeah. potentially 30, 40-minute drive. I know for Chicago, Bridgeview is about a 45, 50-minute drive from the downtown core of Chicago yeah. for us to get out there for the game. So definitely being downtown right by the water is excellent for you guys. Well, and, and for our players, you know, they're, they're young guys like you, and uh, they... 
they enjoy living in the urban environment. So if we were to, to have a suburban facility, then they'd either have to get on the subway or get on a GO train or get into a car and drive to work, and uh, it's just not as not as cool. Yeah, this well, this, cool this place is huge, so let's go check out some more of the stuff if we okay. can. So down here, down here we've got, uh, we've got a, coaches have their own change room, TV in there as well, and uh, that's where they can, you know, lock up their valuables and that kind of thing. And then where we're standing right now is our, our uh, treatment room. And so we've got three treatment beds. You know, on a game day, we'll bring in Frank, who will do massages for our team. And uh, he came on our long road trip as well. Um, we got a sauna over there in the corner. That is a brand new addition. It came in after the Under-20 World Cup. And uh, um, it's proven to be a big hit with our guys. And then behind the glass there, we've got a hot tub and we've got a cold tub. Part of the beauty of being part of a, a bigger corporation that has sports teams, Maple Leaf Sports, is we have access to the facilities at, at uh, Rico Coliseum and at the Air Canada Centre. So between our four teams, we've got a, you know, we've got a lot of good, high-quality equipment um, that, we can, that we can call on. And we also have a network of specialists that we can call on. So that's a, that's a, a big plus for our club versus uh, what, you know, when you're talking about the competitive environment within Major League Soccer, that's another reason why a player might want to come here. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so that's the TFC locker room. Right before the game, we're in the other room over there. The players are all ready. I'm sure you've been in at moments leading up into game time. What's it like? Aside from the national anthem, that's probably my favorite part of game day, is leading up to a game where, you know, there's uh, you, you could probably, you know, you could feel the excitement in the room, and, and it gets very exciting up until they go out and they warm up and then they come back in and then that's where the, the vibe changes and, and Mo and the other coaches have their talk with them and they remind them of the things that they've been showing them all week and, and getting them ready for who they're about to play and uh, the excitement level doesn't go down but the, the sound level goes down and, and it's a different kind of vibe so just leading up to right before when they walk out and they grab the kids hands and they, and they walk out um, for the anthems right at that moment it's, uh, it's pretty cool they're they're all focused. They're all getting focused in their own way. They're, you know, they are a team, but they're also a bunch of individuals. Some guys have headphones on, some guys don't, and they're and they're just getting pumped up. And uh, I remember when we were in um, in Kansas City, um, we were in the NFL dressing room, and it was a visitor t visitors dressing room, and it was very old. And Danny just started walking around punching walls. And it, was, it was the coolest <laughs> thing. The coolest thing. And he was just—he was getting punched, or you know, pumped up for that game. And it was—it uh, was a pretty special time. That's fantastic. Okay, well, we're gonna head back out. He doesn't punch walls around here, by the way. <laughs> okay, so we're up on the third floor now at BMO Field. Where are we, Paul? Uh, this is the media level. So this is an area where uh, people don't generally get to see. Let's see if this door is open. Yes, it is. So much has been made of our view, and it's—it's uh, it's true. This is you know one of the nicest views of the city. <laughs> Uh, so this is always shaking up here. They'll, they'll put cameras up here, but they don't like putting cameras on the shaky stuff because when they do a tight shot of somebody, it, it accentuates it shakes. The shaking a lot. For a, for a long shot, it's okay. <laughs> Perfect. Now, how many people are we talking about on game day up here, generally? Technically, this is a ticketed area. So this is, uh, this is a, a wheelchair accessible area. You can see we've got a whole bunch of black chairs here. Um, so these are for the, uh, the, the people who are coming with, you know, the guests with the uh, people in wheelchairs. But as, it, uh, as, as it's happened in reality, CBC has you know, taken on a quarter of this. And so they'll buy these seats off us and they'll shoot from up here just because they like it so much. So this is the control room for uh, the video board. All the audio and video is edited up here and uh, it is controlled from up here. So people don't realize the amount of effort that, uh, that goes into putting a game on the, on the video board, but we'll have a director and uh, seven cameras and uh, Mason Byrne sits in here and, and does his, uh, his PA announcing from in there. Uh, let's go over to the written press area. Let's go check it out. So we've got the radio rooms. Two radio rooms two broadcast rooms. The, the TV booths are always full. The radio rooms we generally use for overflow TV. Um, you know, a CBC does a very big production. So up here, all, on game day in here, there's, there's makeup and wardrobe people and, and the, the amount of equipment that, that they bring in to put on one of our games is, is unbelievable. So this is where they do the shoot from on game day. You're doing your yeah. pre-game stuff in here. This is Nigel, Nigel and Craig Forrester in, yeah. in here doing their thing. And these, uh, these crazy big windows open up completely so that if they want, they can be completely exposed to the elements and to the sound, and, the, and that's generally what they do. Um, if it was really windy, then we can't let them open the, 
the windows because the, the windows will fly right off. <laughs> and uh, uh, But no, they like to have it open because they like to feel like they're part of the show. They, now, they, they, can, they can hear you guys. So we're here in the written media room. Now how many accredited media are in here on a typical game day? 52. 52. 52 accredited media. And they all eat sandwiches. 52 sandwiches. My mom's at home. <laughs> four loaves of bread. All laid out. She's got to butter them all. What kind of bread are we talking? Wonder. The brown one. No Portuguese cornbread sandwiches for the press? No. If you haven't had those, they're fantastic, by the way. You should check them out. We've got three games of soccer going on down there, too. We'll definitely chat That's a bit about that, That's the future, too. ladies and gentlemen. That's the future of Canadian soccer right there. I, I've heard rumblings about Toronto FC putting together an actual academy, uh, developmental academy for themselves. I've heard about uh, other organizations providing that service for Toronto FC. What direction are you guys looking in to take the team as far as development of players, homegrown talent to one day be part of this team? Well, there's a couple of things. I guess the first thing is we are obligated. We're the only team in the league that doesn't have a development team right now, a development uh, uh, structure. Um, so um, we asked for a year off so we could focus on launching the business, and they said fine. But uh, we are obligated to have some sort of academy, you know, um, youth development structure in place. So um, we're, we're getting closer to an announcement. I think we will be focused in Toronto in the short term. Um, but... Uh, our overall goal is completely linked to the improvement of the Canadian game overall.